Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking in just like that. You guys had the best reaction and responses to my Molly Rogers uh, podcast that I found. It's on Dressed, the History of Fashion, and I got so many wonderful comments that you'd like to keep going. So here we are. Let's keep listening to what's happening on this <laughs> on this podcast. Oh, so many thoughts on this. But first... Check out my merch link below. I got Midnight Toast, Justice for Steve. It's a load of pants. Or find me on Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. So we left off on this podcast. They're interviewing Molly Rogers and Danny Santiago. They were both over the quote unquote fashion for and just like that. Now, I said in the last episode, I'll say it again here. I don't know this podcast. I don't know the people running this. It was just brought to my attention that this interview is something else and boy has it been so far go back and listen to part one if you don't know what I'm talking about but I'm trying not to make fun of the people that put out the podcast yes this is their work I don't know these people I don't you know I don't think they're like famous people so I don't feel right making fun of them I will just say they are heavily drinking the Kool-Aid of Molly Rogers and it's evident in the podcast but also, if you want to hear the uninterrupted version, check them out. It looks like they're called Dressed. I found it just, I don't know, wherever I find podcasts. But this version is me reacting to it. So I will be pausing and having lots of thoughts on this. Let's get back into where we left off in the interview. I have heard you guys say specifically, and that's kind of what I was referencing earlier, is that you didn't change their style just because they're older, which I really... Am I in the Twilight Zone? Their style did change. It all got so much worse. We love that. Like, you believe firmly that, like, style is style, and it transcends our age group. That was our approach. We never really thought of these women doing anything different than what they know and what they have always been sort of their lane and what they've been attracted to as far as what is in fashion and their style of... I truly don't understand what he's saying here because I just did not get the same vibes. I talk about in the first episode, I'll talk about it here. It was not light and fun fashion like we got in the original series. It I don't know what this was. I I keep going back to the stupid yellow dress on the bridge and the the rubber gloves. Like that's one of about of a thousand examples that just make no sense. How they like to wear their fashion and stuff. We feel, you know, as you get older, if anything, maybe you refine it a little bit. So where was that in the series? Did you feel like we were getting refined looks or looks similar to what we've seen before? I just, I just didn't. You know, you, you know what works and what doesn't work better. Yeah, I don't think you're as experimental when you're 30. You know, you know, you know, yeah. you know your, your vibe. And-, and again, if you weren't here for the first episode, that's Molly. You'll hate her. Don't worry. <laughs> Now, she's the one that was responsible for all the looks, you know, like Miranda's plaid tablecloth. That's her. Right. Everybody was asking us before the show aired, what can we expect with the changes of the girls? What are you going to do to bring it into their age group? And our answer for that was, well, they are who they are. Yeah. So I'm trying to take a step back here and think, what bugged me so bad and and I will put the age thing on the writers they wrote these characters like they were 100 that's not the costumer fault okay but I don't think the words that they're saying here match what we saw on TV I didn't they're saying you know that it just doesn't make sense they they did dress them completely different I felt like I just it just isn't match the words aren't matching up with what we saw their dna is so set in stone yeah you know pat gave us a roadmap and a highway to travel on Mm -hmm. yeah and you just you don't flip a coin when you hit 50 yeah and all of a sudden you're wearing turtlenecks and you know cataract glasses again the words aren't matching what we saw it just that they basically did do that to the characters. And again, I, I, you know, I blame the writers for that, not the costumers, but the costumes were terrible. So I'm mad at them too. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, for me, if anything, what's changed is my whole collection of vintage has grown. Yeah. 
drinking the Kool-Aid, drinking the Kool-Aid. We get a little bit writer's room he, room here where we're drinking the Kool-Aid, we're laughing really hard at their quote-unquote jokes. It's just, it's a lot. I'm sure because you your knowledge has. Yeah. So deeply that it's like, you know, for reasons of sustainability and also that, like, that's mainly what I wear these days, so. Yeah. yeah. What does this have to do with in Just Like That? This is a load of pants. This is my load of pants moment for this episode. I think for everybody and like with our show, one thing that we would always say too is that if anything, they've explored more into fashion and finding more people because of the internet, because of Instagram. We've been able to open the world up more with the designers that we've used. Okay, I take it back. This is a load of pants. So the girls have been more exposed to designers internationally and globally that maybe aren't the big main designers, but we've been able to bring small designers come in and be able to bring that to part of the girls' looks now. And I feel that's been something that we've really had a lot of fun with. Cool. What are we talking about? Where was that in the show? (laughs) Do you remember learning of a small designer you didn't previously know of? Because I don't. I just remember thinking, what the hell are they wearing? Because we've explored so many new people and we found so many more people globally with the internet with instagram it was it was so much fun to do that the world has changed so much since the last movie the last movie you got lookbooks um maybe in your email you know mm-hmm. and you looked at things and you called them back and said you know made your request or whatever Okay, so let's talk about that. They're talking about the movies versus now. And say what you will, like the movies, don't like the movies. That's, you know, that's up to you. But I will say, even though I'm not a huge fan of the second movie, I still, I liked it better than in Just Like That. And I remember having some wow fashion moments in there. I just never got that from in Just Like That. I never felt it. I'm not even trying to be negative. Again, I can put that on the writers. If the fashion was great, I'd say it. I just didn't feel like that in this show at all. Whatever. Well, that is not the case now. Yeah. You watch a live couture show. Yeah. You know, uh, on your phone. Yeah. It's just the world is so wide open, which makes you, you have so much you can, you know, pull. Okay. Here's my make it make sense time out for everybody. These are some of the fashions that we got to see in it just like this. She's talking about all the ways they could pull from all these designers. Do you notice anything? Hmm. All we could do was plaid. And I'll be honest, I love plaid. I personally own a lot of plaid pieces, but not beige plaid. And I'm not on a TV show and people aren't looking for my fashion. It just doesn't make any sense. What they're saying makes no sense. Handbags from South Africa like Danny did or jewelry. But it also makes things, you know, uh, you need to really go on a hunt for the treasures. So again, where were those treasures? All I'm thinking about is LTW's safari hairdresser outfit. You know what I mean? Like they didn't even do justice to the, the, whatever, the co-stars. Like it just, it doesn't make any sense. What they're saying doesn't make any sense. I could find these looks at TJ Maxx. And I'm not even trying to put down TJ Maxx. I think I can find cuter looks at TJ Maxx. I don't understand what these people are talking about. Do you know? Because everyone has immediate access to that runway show on their phone. And there's so many craftsmen internationally from all over the world that we can get these beautiful things done now. Okay, they're making my points for me. They can get craftsmen from all over the world that are dying to have their works featured. And what did they pick? Rhymes with smlad. Find these amazing things from all over the place. And it just, it enriches, I feel, what we've done and just gives it a more global, you know, connection to everything that we've done, really. Yeah, yeah. And and also you're including more BIPOC designers, I'm sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in that quest for the best. <laughs> I understand as podcast host, she probably can't say what the hell are you guys talking about, but I don't think it's even hitting her mind. What the hell are you guys talking about? I think she's wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're saying. I agree. I agree. And it's just, it's not making for a good interview. (laughs) Not only the, it's just really fun to meet people who are small business owners, small artists, local artists, 
wherever, not just local New York. Yeah. And it means so much to them. To- so just like we talk about in the writer's room, they pat themselves on the back for this incredible, notice the sarcasm, load of pants dripping on my voice here, incredible writing they've done. So now they're patting themselves on the back for this incredible gifts that they're giving these designers to be able to feature in the show. Get a piece on the show. They're so like, excited and so much fun and they can't do enough for you and they're just so appreciative. It's It's been so much fun to do that, really, and expose them to, to the world and to the viewers and the fans to know all these new people. I actually feel bad for those people that they're talking about. Imagine you working your whole life to get your design out there and you get it out there and it's on a piece of shit like and just like that where everybody's panning it and they're specifically talking about how bad the fashion is even if you have a fantastic piece one fantastic piece in a pile of shit is not <laughs> it's not going to help you at all that sucks right because the show is such a moving fashion magazine you know it's just their kind of big shot like you are an ingenue yeah. and it's your screen test. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. it's really fun. Okay. I think I've had about as much as my blood pressure will let me handle. We saw lots of loads of pants in this one. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, it's just so much fun to go over this stuff with you guys. And it just really, I just, my mind is blown. It really is. I feel like we are in the twilight zone and we're the only ones that can see how terrible this is. And I don't understand how these people can't, but oh man. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic day and yeah, if you want to keep going, comment below and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.